Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, sort the people. So finally we get an easy problem. I consider this pretty much a day off to be honest. We're given two arrays names and heights. They're going to be of equal length because each position in one corresponds to the same position in the other. So it's kind of like a mapping. The person with the name Mary has a height of 180 and we could continue going. And so the idea is that we want to return the names in sorted order, but we don't want to sort them based on the names. We want to sort the names based on some kind of different key. And in this case, it happens to be the height of each name. So this is fundamentally a good problem to understand because it doesn't necessarily relate only to this problem. Imagine we wanted to sort the names based on like the second character in each name or the length of each name or something like that. So there are a few ways to do it. I think honestly, the easiest way might even be in Python, like built in sort. I think you can probably pass in a custom key. I actually haven't tried that yet. Maybe I will in a second. But the main one I wanted to show you is the one that you can probably extend to any language. And that is first, of course, we want to sort the heights. And by the way, they don't want them to be sorted in ascending order. They want them to be sorted in descending order. So from this, it'd be 180, 170 and 165. Right. So what's the problem? Why can't we just use some kind of built in sort to take the second array and sort it in descending order? Well, the problem becomes that we didn't sort the other thing at the same time. And again, in Python, it's very easy to get around this. You can just create an array of pairs, create like a pair with the name and the height, and then use the height to sort them. And then you'll have the relative order that we want, and then we can return the output. But imagine we couldn't do something that easy. How would you do it in that case? Well, they make the problem honestly very easy for us. They tell us that every height is going to be distinct. Every name is going to be distinct. So as soon as you hear that word, that keyword distinct, your mind should at least consider the very common data structure that you probably always consider anyway called the hash map. So we can map every height to its name so that even after we've changed the order of the heights, we can still preserve the original like names for each of them. So 180, we would have created a hash map. 180 would have mapped to Mary, 165 John, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end, we can say, okay, this is Mary. 165 is gonna be Emma and 170 is gonna be John. And so as you can see, or I think I did it wrong. I don't know how I made such a silly mistake, but okay, 165 was John. Uh, so he's over here and then Mary's on the other side. So that's pretty much it. I think I could draw out more of it, but I think I'll show the code to you now. And even the time complexity analysis will probably be easier in the code. So what I'm going to do is go through both the names and the heights simultaneously. We know the lengths are the same. So I could do something like for I in range, the length of each or either of them. Um, but I'm not going to do that because in Python, we might as well show off our Python skills because it just feels so good to do something like this. You can actually iterate over two arrays at the same time by using the zip function. It just feels amazing to be able to do this. So what I'm going to do now is create the mapping, mapping each height to the name. And I'm going to have a hash map for that height to name. Um, that's the longest name I've probably ever written. And I'm going to map it just like that. And so next, we want to collect the sorted names and then return them. So just write out the boilerplate for that. That's kind of my style to do that. But next, we want to obviously go through the heights in sorted order. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to use a built in sorting function for that. So I'm going to say for H in sorted heights. Remember, we also want to do it in descending order. So it's also pretty easy to do that in Python. Just pass that into the reversed function. And then we've got the heights in reverse order. That's not what we want to return, though. We want to return the names in sorted order. So we're going to get the name that corresponds to the height and we're going to append it to the result just like that. So that's pretty much the solution. You can see it works. It's pretty efficient. What exactly was the time complexity, though? Well, we iterate over both arrays. That's linear time. Then we build the output array. That's also linear time. The bottleneck, though, is going to be here, not the reversed, but the sorted function. Built in sorting is generally n log n. It's safe to assume that, I think, in most languages. So that's the bottleneck. Time complexity is going to be n log n. Space complexity is, if you're not counting the output, still going to be linear because of the hash map that we have. So linear uh, space. 
We could have also manually implemented a sorting function such as merge sort or insertion sort. If you want to learn about that, you can probably check out uh, NeatCode.io. I might have some other videos and it's definitely covered in my courses. But I will say that even if we implemented some kind of merge sort on heights, what would we do? Like we've got the heights, their numbers, and we're sorting them. And suppose we did something like merge sort. We have like one, three, four, two. And suppose like we're at this half of the array. And so we're trying to sort it. This is the base case. This is the base case. And then we merge them in sorted order. Of course, we would swap these two, right? We'd put two over here and then we put four over there. But sorting the heights alone isn't enough. So every time we perform a swap in merge sort, or if you could use quick sort as well, or some other sorting algorithm, anytime you perform a swap in the heights array to sort that in ascending order or descending order rather, you would also then perform the exact same swap in the other array. So that's literally the only trick. That's the only difference from just using regular merge sort or quick sort. So I wanted to mention that at the very least. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.